Hey all, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Prof. If you're new to the channel, uh, I guess there's two sides uh, to what I'm trying to accomplish here. One is just kind of a chronicling a day in the life as I lead into certain races, and uh, hopefully you've been able to see some of those, and maybe that's what brought you here overall. The other side, and what this video is going to be, is more of the Ask the Prof, where I focus on or try to use my experience as a former professor of exercise science to tackle some of the topics or explain why I use some of the uh, products I do or maybe discuss some uh, uh, training tips or things like that. And so that is what this video is going to be. It's been a hot minute since I've done an Ask the Prof uh, video. It's been a busy time as I've uh, prepped for obviously the world championships back in May and then just kind of sling, uh, kept pushing that fitness forward and raced a few times after that, but I am looking forward to a little bit of downtime here and I'm going to try to put together a few of these videos here to uh, start pushing out moving forward as well. So this video is actually by uh, user request. I posted a video in my lead up into the World Championships where I had like a 20 second part of that video. I talked about uh, how I was using uh, Delta G ketones and uh, how I was trying to kind of develop that protocol with a new nutrition plan. And I had a ton of comments on that and questions about that. And so I figured I would at least try to start explaining that here. It is a, a fairly in-depth uh, logic behind it and, and it's not just an easy answer. So in this video, I'm going to just talk a little bit about why I started and how I went about uh, starting to develop uh, the protocol that I'm using in training and racing right now. And in later videos, uh, I will tackle a lot more of the uh, in-depth analysis behind what ketone easters are, the difference between the different ones that are on the market, because there is a big difference. Uh, hint, some work and some really don't. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's kind of the, the uh, direction that this video is going and what the future videos are going to cover as well. So if you've seen any of these videos before, you know I like to start with a physiological rationale or why is it, would it possible, be possible that this would uh, you know, this would work. And so when it comes to what I was accomplishing when I started to uh, try to introduce ketone esters into my fueling strategy for uh, training and, and especially for racing, the number one issue that I was trying to accomplish was to try to bring down the overall carbohydrate intake that I am consuming so I can bring up the overall um, electrolyte blend sodium and all the other electrolytes that I use during or that I need during training and racing. Right now I or before I was basically maxing out my osmolality trying to meet my uh, fueling needs and so I was still having some issues especially in hotter races uh, with cramping later on and so I needed to be able to increase the sodium and the electrolyte uh, blend that I'm taking in. And I, you know, was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I can't reduce the amount of uh, car carbohydrates that I was taking in because uh, I, that would have resulted in a redu reduction of performance, but I couldn't increase the amount of sodium that I was taking in during hot races because that would also would re result in a reduction of performance. So it, it was kind of like what, what one is better. And so uh, in the past, I was always trying to, you know, just err a little bit on the lower side of, carbo of carbohydrates and more on the higher side of uh, electrolytes in hotter races. So relying more on EFS Pro, first endurance EFS Pro during hot races than I do during cooler races because I need more sodium and the EFS Pro is a little bit lighter on calories, higher on sodium. Uh, but that was leaving a little bit of on the table in terms of total performance because obviously I need to feed the engine as well. And so that got me really digging into what possible things that I could do to try to adjust this. And I came across a study that talked about um, basically how uh, nutritional ketosis can alter fuel performance. And 
Uh, that was the gist of the study. It's linked below. Uh, but that was really the first study that I looked at that really got me thinking, okay, you know, I've seen these out there. I know uh, that they've been marketed, uh, but I haven't actually tried them myself. And I do want to say, you know, first off, that I have not actually tried the uh, using ketone esters while doing intermittent fasted or fasted training. That's not what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying, I will play around with that later in a different time of the season and just see if that's something that might be beneficial for me personally. But that's not what I'm doing at this point in time. I am really trying to see if I can use the ketone ester in order to allow me to reduce my carbohydrate need and therefore increase my overall uh, ability to absorb electrolytes, right? Remember, we have uh, to take into account osmolality in the gut when we're, when we're um, fueling during a race. And any time we're adding carbohydrates or, or electrolytes, that increases the osmolality. And so, you know, when I'm at the top end of that already, you know, I have to reduce one to increase the other. And so basically what I'm trying to see is if I could accomplish uh, being able to have the same le high level of performance that I would in a cooler race when I don't need as much electrolytes uh, by reducing the amount of carbohydrate that I have and relying on the ketone ester to be essentially a fourth macronutrient. The study that I mentioned before basically suggests that we can put ourselves in a state of ketosis while while continuing to take in glucose and maintaining a high level of insulin production. And when we are in that situation, we're basically allowing our body to burn fat more than rely on produce or burning carbohydrate. And so therefore we're producing less lactate as well. So basically that essentially shows that you can use the right ketone esters as a fourth macronutrient while you're exercising. As I just kind of alluded to, it does require the right ketone ester. And that does mean that not all ketone esters are the same, or not all ketones that are marketed out to you are going to be as effective as the others. And in fact, as I first started down this rabbit hole, I started with kind of some of the uh, cheapest ones that I could buy for the testing. I bought a, a device called a Keto Mojo, and I was actually testing, I would take it, uh, a, serving of the ketones and I would I would test myself you know multiple times following that just to try to track what was changing or if I was actually increasing the ketones the ketone levels in my blood and I started having really disappointing results uh, the ones that I was starting with were not moving the needle at all basically I was not able to get my blood ketone levels above 1.0 I finally came to I think it was the third one that I tested to Delta G ketone and that one within 30 minutes when I was taking it in the morning fasted brought me straight up to 2.0 or 2.1 on a regular basis like three or four days in a row and so then I started using it during uh, training sessions and you know before and during training sessions and tracking how long it would take and if it was actually going up while I was taking in carbohydrates as well and really you know going about it in the you know just trying okay I'll do it every two hours or maybe every 90 minutes or three hours during these long uh, sessions that I was taking or that I was doing leading into the world championships and really tried to dial in my own personal protocol. And what I was finding was that despite I was the fact that I was taking in a lot of water and a high, you know, fairly high amount of carbohydrate and electrolytes, I was still able to see an increase. I was still getting readings above 2.0 within 20 or 30 minutes after taking a full serving of the Delta G during exercise. So it was basically putting my body into this state of ketosis while I was having an elevated insulin response. Uh, basically, I was testing uh, with a continuous glucose monitor that I've talked about in the past, like the Super Sapiens. I was also doing finger pricks for both glucose and, um, 
and using the Keto Mojo for blood ketone levels. And so basically I was able to show that the, you know, physiological rationale that I came, you know, talked about at the beginning of this video was indeed occurring and was, you know, actually able to happen with me during physical activity. And so now I just had to really work to dial in my specific plan. So leading into the world championships, I made the the plan that I was trying to develop, the nutrition plan that I was trying to develop in a hot, humid or hot and dry environment, sorry, um, was to basically take enough carbohydrate in to to keep my blood sugar between 150 and 160, whereas in the past, I would keep it above 165, which again, this is a much higher level than most people are going to do, This, but that's the level that I needed to do in order to perform the way that I wanted to perform, okay? Um, so keep in mind that all numbers are individualized. That's what makes the nutrition side of things a little bit difficult, um, but that's the numbers that I needed. And so basically, I was trying to reduce the um, carbohydrate need to allow me to increase the sodium that I was taking in or the electrolyte blend that I was taking in. From my testing that I did in the heat lab, and then you know I've kind of retested numerous times using other, other um, methods, I'm, I can be above three grams an hour of sodium loss, which is a ton. And if I don't replace that at the end of a seven and a half to eight hour day, I'm in trouble, especially in a hot human environment. And so um, again, the overall goal was to develop a protocol that allowed me to, uh, to take in, basically rely more on my first endurance EFS Pro, which has a slow burning carb, but a lower carb amount and that much higher, uh, much higher electrolyte blend than the standard EFS. And in the past, I would use a blend of both or just all standard EFS on a cooler day. I'm not ready to quite release my full protocol or what I did just yet. I'm still working on refining it. I've had two races, 170.3 and one full. And uh, by the time this video is actually published, I'll probably have a third race under my belt, uh, which is another full Ironman. So I'm continually tinkering and testing and putting myself in different uh, loads, uh, you know, testing in hot and humid environments uh, or hot and dry and just continually refining the uh, plan that I'm using. But I was really happy with the results that I was able to get from the nutrition side of things, uh, both at the first full and the first 70.3 that I use this protocol with, that I use the Delta G ketone esters with. And so I will continue to, to develop my personal plan. And I'll talk a lot more about that in the future when I'm a little bit more comfortable with uh, releasing the overall numbers. I'll, like I said before, I'll also keep talking about, uh, I'll do a deeper dive on the science behind ketone esters. I'll do a review in the future, distant future, on uh, doing this with intermittent fasting and what my experience with that has been as well. So you know, make sure that if this is a topic that interests you, you uh, hit the subscribe button on your way out. And we'll see you next time.